In this example, we're going to look at solving this first order linear differential equation. So as a recap, remember that it's first order because the highest derivative we see is the first derivative. And we say it's linear because it's, it can be written in this form, y prime plus p of x, y equals q of x, where of course p of x and q of x are functions in x. So in our example, it looks like p of x is just going to be 1, so p of x equals 1, which means our integrating factor will be pretty easy to find. So let's call our integrating factor r of x, and that equals e to the power of the integral of p of x dx, so that's just 1 with respect to x. And this integral is very straightforward. It makes our integrating factor e to the x. All right, well, what are we going to do with this integrating factor e to the x? Well, we're going to multiply through this entire differential equation by e to the x. So y prime plus y equals e to the negative x. And I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that e to the x through all those terms. So it looks like I'll have e to the x y prime plus e to the x y. And I'll go ahead and write this out, e to the x times e to the negative x. Well, a couple things here. On the left side, it looks like the product rule has been employed. And again, this is why we use our integrating factor and why we solve these linear equations this way. It's because it becomes e to the x times y when I integrate that left side. The right side, however, e to the x times e to the negative x, we'll use an algebraic property of exponents here. When I'm multiplying like bases, I'll add the exponents. So x minus x, well, is actually 0. So it's e to the 0, which makes 1. Well, OK, well, I need to integrate that right side since I've already integrated the left side. So it looks like e to the x times y will equal x plus c. So solving for y, I'm going to divide every single term by e to the x. And the e to the x is cancel here. And it looks like y equals, and what I'm going to do, instead of having these e to the x's in the denominator, I'm going to bring them up and change their exponent from a positive x to a negative x. So it'll be e to the negative x right here times my x, and then plus c e to the negative x. And this will be my solution. And what's nice about this is I can go ahead and plug it back into my original differential equation, which was y plus, let's see, y prime plus y equals e to the negative x. So we need to find the derivative here. So y prime will equal, and I'm going to need to use the product rule here, so the derivative of the first times the second, and then we have the minus, because we we'll end up using chain rule, x times e to the negative x and then minus c e to the negative x, and that'll be the derivative, and you can go ahead and check that out. Okay, so y prime plus y. So I'm going to add this y prime, which is e to the negative x, minus x e to the negative x, minus c e to the negative x, and I'm going to add that to my solution here, so plus x e to the negative x, plus c e to the negative x, Whew. and I should get e to the negative x when I'm done. Okay, a lot of stuff going on here. So minus x to the e to the x, and then plus x e to the negative x, those will cancel. And negative c e to the negative x, and a positive c e to the negative x, those will cancel. And it looks like I am left with e to the negative x equals e to the negative x, so it works. So this is the general solution for my original differential equation.